Greetings! Today's lesson, we're going to chat about mathematical modeling and curve fitting. We're going to chat a little bit about and use extensively our Desmos app. So when we want to choose an appropriate mathematical model that might fit the data we have, one way is to look at the scatter plot of our data and then decide if there's a pattern which fits a function we are familiar with. We're familiar with linear functions, quadratic functions, cubic functions, quartic, and exponential functions. So below I have a table with some generic ways in which we write a linear function. A linear function we know is f of x is equal to mx plus b. We have two options for quadratic. The Regular one is the f of x is ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is greater than zero. And when a is greater than zero, we know that our quadratic function opens up. However, we also can have the piece where a is less than zero, which would mean that our parabola would open down. We also have a variety of different polynomial functions we've worked with, and neither of them would be quadratic or linear. And the last option that we're going to work with is um, an exponential function, where f of x is equal to a sub 0 um, times a to the power of x. For the following scatter plots and graphs, determine which, if any, of the above functions might be used as a model for the data. So in our function table, would any of these work um, based on the, the information that we have? So looking at part A, if I were to draw a line of best fit, if you will, that connects, as, that kind of shows the direction in which our graph is going, I would say that our graph is definitely a linear-based model. Now looking at part B, if I were to draw a slight curve here, it appears that this does not follow a quadratic, but perhaps more importantly, an exponential. And our last data set here, there is real no, I mean, if I try to connect these, we're not all going up or going down. There's kind of an upside down pattern, but I would say this is some kind of polynomial, um, but it's neither quadratic or linear. These little data points down here, are kind of putting a, a wrench in our plan here if we were to try to do um, an upside down polynomial. Which leads me to state that we should not try to force a pattern when there may not be a pattern. It's okay for there to not be a model that fits our data. If there is a model that seems to fit our data, we can use data points and derive the equation of the function. Now this could be a manual process, but we're going to particularly use Desmos to help us. So the following table and scatter plot shows the number of households with high speed internet service. It appears that our data can be modeled by a linear function. So let's find a linear function that fits the data and use the model to predict the number of households with high speed internet service in 2018. So I'm going to use Desmos to push this information together. Now that we're in Desmos, I'm going to select an item, a table in particular, and I'm going to let my x values be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 7 based on the data that's given in the table. And I'm going to let the y values represent the number in millions of households who have high speed internet. We can't see our data points, so I'm going to zoom out a little bit here to see if we can't find them. Oh, there they are. Okay, so yeah, they do appear to be in a, a linear function model. So we can see that once we place them on our, our graph that they are arranged in a somewhat linear manner. So on our second line in Desmos, we're going to put our generic function using the linear function model. So to do that, I'm going to cl click Y, 
on the ABC button, I'm going to click A sub B so I can get the little sub 1. So we know that decimals know which data to pull the information from. I'm going to use this squiggly line for about M X sub 1 so it knows which values of X to pull and then plus B here. So we can see that it lines up nicely. We also see that it's giving us some statistics. It gives us the R value and notice our R value here is very close to 1 so this is a good model to use. It also gives us our slope and it gives us our y-intercept. So I'm going to round these to two decimal places here. Going back to our problem then, we see that our linear function is given by f of x equal to 3.56x, which was our m, plus 26.76 our b. Now we can predict for 2018. Since 2018 is 13 years after 2005, I want to evaluate for f of 13. So wherever I see x, I'm going to put 13. When I multiply and add, I see that f of 13 is approximately 73.04 million. And we can see that our graph is increasing so that it does make sense with the problem that it's asking. From a study by Dr. Harold Moroz of Yale University, the following data show the relationship between the death rate of men and the average number of hours per day that the men slept. So X represents the number of hours and Y represents the number of uh, death rate um, per 100,000. So let's make a scatter plot of this data and decide whether the data seem to fit a quadratic function. Going back to decimals, I'm going to delete what we started with here and put in our new data. So 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And then we have our y values. I'm just going to leave our y approximate mx plus b here because we might come back to that a little later. But we do need to find where our data points are so we can see if our, our data points fit. So I found our data points here. Let's see if we can't fix our x-axis. Let's say go from negative 5 to 10, maybe 11, and we're going to go up by, by 1s. Okay. So we can see that perhaps our, our version here of a linear equation doesn't quite fit right. So let's see if what a quadratic function might look like. So we're going to use the same y sub 1. We're just going to open a new line here. y sub 1 is approximately. Now we're going to put in a x sub 1 squared plus bx sub 1 plus c so that we can obtain our quadratic value. Now this looks like a much better fit as it's trying to get as close to the data points as possible. We're given r squared and notice that um, in comparison to the r value here and the r value here, um, the quadratic version is much closer to one than the one prior. So um, we have our A value, we have our B value, and we have our C value. So we can just plunk that into the generic equation for our overall equation. Using then the values of A, B, and C, we have our quadratic function labeled. Part C is asking us to find the death rate for males who sleep two hours, eight hours, and 10 hours. So now that we have our model, we can go ahead and use the model to plug in for f of 2. So wherever I see x, I'm going to put uh, 2, which is approximately 3,162 deaths. 
which seems to be accurate considering two is much smaller on the list here and looking at the data points it should be extended. If we do f of 8 we get approximately 743 which is nearly and very close to our data points and then for 10 hours we see that our rate continues to go up a little bit. The chart below relates the average number of live births to women of a particular age. Find a quadratic function to the data using decimals, fit a cubic function to the data using decimo decimals, and then we'll answer a couple of questions here. So I'm going to transfer this data over to decimals, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, I've reset our table to match the one from our notes. And we have our data points here. Um, I left all of the, uh, the linear and the quadratic ones here, so we'll see what a linear looks like. when we The data doesn't really quite fit a linear model. And look at this, it's negative, so it's not even close to one. So we can ignore that model. What about a quadratic? It's asking us to fit a quadratic to the model. So this one seems fairly close. It is giving us the values of A, B, and C. But let's also look at a cubic function here. Notice that our cubic function here also kind of fits the data as well. And notice I have uh, Y sub 1 is approximately AX sub 1 cubed plus BX sub 1 squared plus CX sub 1 plus D. And it's giving us our values for r as well. So notice that the cubic function is much closer to 1 than our quadratic function. And I'm given our a value, our b, and our c, and our d for the coefficients in our function. So let's go back and answer the last couple of questions. So here it is listed our quadratic function. Here is listed our cubic function based on the data that we pulled. And we also saw that the cubic function better fit our data. And then let's use the function that we chose from part C, so our cubic function, to estimate the average of live births in women of ages 20 and 30. So we will plug in f of 20 into our cubic function. And we see it's approximately 71.1. So when I look at my table of data, it seems appropriate. And when I look at f of 30, plugging 30 into our cubic function, we get approximately 98.1. Again, that fits nicely into our data. The data below illustrates the annual sales in millions of dollars rounded to the nearest 250 million of compact discs in the United States between 2007 and 2012. Find a quadratic model that fits the data and estimate its annual sales in 2017. Find an exponential model to the data and then which model better predicts the future annual sales of compact discs. So I'm going to use 0, 1, 2, 3, four and five with my data when I transfer it over for the val for the value of the years.